Welcome back. Today we are talking about stress, right? Life seems to become more stressful with each passing day lately. The impact of stress can pose serious challenges to your health and happiness. Much of our stress is the result of habits that have a negative impact on our lives though, right? We create our own stress and become less capable of dealing with it effectively. So today we're talking about how to fix that on the Productive Not Busy podcast with me, Wayne Weathersby. You're listening to the Productive Not Busy podcast, where our mission is to make you more money so you'll have less stress and more free time. It's all about mindset, attitude, and taking action. And your host, Wayne Weathersby, knows how to make that happen. He's negotiated and closed over $150 million in contracts while building businesses with proven success strategies that he wants to share with you. So if you're ready to make some real money, then let's get to it. Here's Coach Wayne. Habits save time and are kind of similar to the autopilot feature found on airplanes. By relying on our habits, we free up our mind for other tasks. So while it's easy to see how diet and exercise habit can influence your waistline, it's a little more challenging to accept the idea that our habits can either create stress and misery or promote relaxation and harmony. But habits can do exactly that. There's a quote that says, being in control of your life and having realistic expectations about your day-to-day challenges are the keys to stress management, which is perhaps the most important ingredient to living happy, healthy, and rewarding life. So let's talk about the negative impact of stress on your life. There are two types of stress, new stress and distress. Did you know that? I didn't until I started researching this. Got a little stress going on. Got some issues right now going on with my mother who is terminally ill. And stress kind of catches up with you. So let's talk about those. You stress is good, positive stress. Working towards goals or taking a vacation can be stressful, but in a positive way. Didn't know there was a difference, did you? Neither did I. However, When most of us talk about stress, we're referring to distress. Consider the negative impact of stress can have on your health. Stress can lead to weight gain. Did you know that? Of course. People call it stress eating. Studies have shown that higher levels of stress frequently reduce the desire to exercise. Want us to lay around and feel pathetic. Stress also has a negative impact on the ability or desire to make healthy food choices. So excess weight gain is dangerous, especially considering that it can lead to various serious medical conditions, especially with COVID and the pandemic going on. It's right up there with heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, which all can create sudden death. That's pretty stressful when you think about it, right? So if you're struggling with your weight, consider the amount of stress in your life. And that doesn't mean overweight. That means underweight as well. Stress, and this has been my problem, can disrupt your sleep. If you've ever noticed that a lack of sleep can do to your mood the next day, it's kind of easy to imagine what it does to your whole freaking body. When you're stressed, it can be difficult to fall asleep or even stay asleep. Your body and your mind need the restoration provided by sufficient sleep. Super important. Stress also increases the likelihood of serious illness. We talked about that a moment ago. High levels of stress have been shown to result in a higher prevalence of serious illnesses. Societies and professions with high levels of stress tend to experience the poorest health. Stress has a negative impact on your immune system. That's why physical and emotional stressors have detrimental effects on the immune system function. This is not only makes you more susceptible to catching colds or the flu or other mild illnesses, but it also increases the risk of cancer. Your immune system plays a vital role 
in the destruction of cancer cells. I've educated myself. I've used the time that I'm spending with my mom here in her last days to educate myself on this stuff. And it's very interesting, especially when I started reading up on how the immune system plays a vital role. Your immune system can actually destruct cancer cells if it's healthy. Stress is a powerful source that has an undesirable impact on your health. Decreasing the amount of stress in your life greatly enhances your overall health and chances of longevity, plain and simple. Creating positive habits can help to minimize stress. Stress also influences happiness and sense of well-being. We all know this. Stress can negatively affect your mood, right? Stress is believed to be the leading cause of depression. We've had all that feeling of being, you know, being trapped and miserable during our times of excess or chronic stress. It's difficult to have a positive outlook toward the future if stress is the biggest part of your life, or if you use that as an excuse. Stress can negatively affect all of your relationships, whether it arises from money, parenting, work, family issues, or other personal stress. It can make relationships much more difficult to manage. Stress and happiness rarely go together. Reducing your stress will likely lead to greater peace, harmony, and happiness. That's what I wrote in my journal. I found all these quotes that kind of go along with this, this theme that we're talking about. The truth is that stress doesn't come from your boss, your kids, your spouse, traffic, health challenges, or circumstances. It comes from your thoughts about these circumstances. Next, how positive habits can reduce stress. Our lives are largely the result of our thoughts and habits. It's easy to see the impact that habits, both positive and negative, have on our lives. Just think about it. Brushing your teeth each day has a profound impact on the condition of your teeth, right? <laughs> Missing a day here and there has very little impact, but brushing on a regular basis has a huge positive outcome. Now, on the flip side of that, failing to brush your teeth regularly has a very negative effect and brushing your teeth occasionally doesn't help much. So your dentist will unlikely be able to tell whether you've brushed your teeth 10 times or zero times over the last six months, but it's the habit of brushing that provides the positive results. Also, there are many habits that can reduce your stress and promote your well-being that your soul create, you know, craves. Again, these habits won't accomplish much if only used sparingly. It's important to make a daily habit of them. Remember, stress is something that you often do to yourself. Being yelled at by your boss isn't necessarily stressful. It's your resulting thoughts that create stress and your reaction to that. I wrote some of these other ones down, some other examples. You know, does it mean that I'm going to be fired? How will my family survive? That guy's such an a-hole. He's a jerk. I'm never going to get that promotion. I got I to gotta really have that raise. Now it probably won't happen. This guy hates me. I hate my job. Can you see how more positive mental habits could result in less stress? Although these mental habits might be deeply ingrained, they can be altered for the better. There are certain habits that help minimize stress and promote well-being. Creating new habits that serve you and support your physical and mental health can only make life easier and more fulfilling, if you ask me. I started writing down like habits to incorporate into my day that kind of give me some focus, the A to B focus, right? Your A is where you're at, B is where you want to get to. It's your journey in between, it's the dash. So I started writing these down the other night. So before retiring or going to bed for the evening, make a list of these things that need to be done the following day. Prioritize them and create a plan for getting them done. 
by making this list at night, you free up your mind to focus on other things. Your brain is free to work on solutions while you sleep, believe it or not. You can get started immediately. Don't procrastinate on this. You can exercise also. Exercise boosts your mood. An intense workout can help you clear your mind, burn off excess energy, and reduce stress. I started taking my dog for a walk every night. It's good for both of us. It's good for your body, good for your mind, good for your pup. Just choose a form of exercise that you enjoy. And remember that there are plenty of options for exercising alone or with others. You don't have to worry about doing it in a group and you don't even have to tell anybody you're doing it. Just find a way to make exercise a part of your day. It's amazing what just a simple walk will do or a bike ride. I want you to be grateful also. When feeling stressed, you're probably focusing on negative. Everything seems to go south when you stress. But you likely have many things in your life to be grateful for, right? Think about it. Healthy kids, money in the bank. And even if you don't have money in the bank, remember, the positive in that is attitude, action, approach, taking action. All of that is not a commodity. There's nobody that you've got to go to and ask permission for that. That's on you. On the drive to work, make a mental list of everything in your life that fills you with a sense of gratitude. It might be your health, children, spouse, home, song on the radio. Right? I've got a uh, an episode coming up here probably in the next week or so. And it's a mental state that talking to an older gentleman uh, about just life in general. He uses red lights to relax. Red lights are his reminder to relax because he used to get so fired up. He used to drive quite a distance to work and red lights and traffic used to stress him out and he nearly had a heart attack. And he said his doctor told him to reframe the drive every day. Know that it's coming, so don't stress about it. And that to use the red lights as a reminder to relax. So... I've got that in my journal. I'm going to do an episode on that soon too. So I want you to focus on positive. You're going to raise your level of happiness no matter what. I promise. Stay in the present. Don't think about the past and what could have been. When your stress level starts to rise, you may kind of disassociate from your environment, start living more inside your own head. That's the worst thing you can do because your inner critic will kick your ass every time. Stress has a way of making us fret about the future and focus on the past. The cycle only magnifies the stress, I promise. Imagining the worst is not going to help. I, that's one thing that I can 100% guarantee. Imagining the worst isn't going to make it better. If anything, it's going to make it less capable or make you less capable of dealing with the issues at hand. It's simple to bring back to the present moment. Focusing on your environment is the best way to snap back to reality. So. Play I spy. Look around. Describe 10 things that you see. If possible, describe them out loud. For example, I'm looking out the window and see a small brown dog running through the grass, and he has a red collar. Right? After you've described the 10 things you see, go through a similar process on what you hear, what you smell, what you feel. Right? Depending on the environment, finding 10 items may be difficult, so just do as many as you can. See, by the time you're done, you'll be back in your present moment and out of your head. Your stress level will will freaking be lower, I promise. Next, I want you to monitor your mood and self-talk. Most challenges are easier to prevent than they are to solve. Famous words from my coach. Most challenges are easier to prevent than they are to solve. It's much easier to avoid gaining weight than it is to lose 100 pounds. That came out of our conversation, myself and my coach, because he lost 100 pounds. He says it would have been much easier to prevent being like that than it was to get down to where I needed to be. See, it's easier to brush your teeth each day than it is to deal with rotting, decaying teeth. Sorry to be so graphic. If you're able to notice when your mood and thoughts start to go awry, it's much easier to bring yourself back to a more positive condition. 
So when you first start to feel stressed, acknowledge it. Begin to deal with it right then that second. Don't lather yourself up in it. Don't wallow in it. Remember, don't wrestle with a pig in the mud because the pig likes it. It takes time to develop this habit, but it's critical. I promise. You might want to set a timer to avoid or to remind yourself to review how you're feeling. It sounds stupid, but I'm telling you, it's better than being stressed. It's better than dying early. It's better than having a chronic illness. I want you to spend some time on some enjoyable activities. If you feel like you rarely get to do anything and taking part in anything fun, now is the time to freaking start. There's rarely better time than the present. You don't have time to be in the hospital in ICU either with a heart attack. That's not habit forming. Think about something you've always dreamed of doing. Come up with a plan to make it a regular part of your life. 30 minutes of enjoyable anything. Activity, make it happen. It'll make you feel better. Here's one that some people embrace and some people don't. Meditate or pray. Meditation is one of the best ways to give your brains a rest. Even sleep isn't as mentally restful because often you spend all night dreaming about work or bizarre situations. There's nothing you can do about that, but you can control meditation. I've dabbled in it. It's starting to grow on me. A lot of people find benefit in prayer. It can provide a peaceful perspective and hope for the future. I say, maybe try adding a little meditation and a little prayer into your daily schedule. Check out some resources at the bookstore or online, something. Just get started. This is another one I hear a lot about is forgiveness. If you're unable to forgive somebody for something, it's difficult to be at peace. Focusing on old hurts likely gets you worked up. A lot of people like having that crutch. There's a lot of things in this world that people focus on in the past as a crutch or as a break the glass in case of emergency, so that way they have an excuse when they're messed up. Furthermore, failing to forgive yourself for your own missteps can hold you back as well. Don't forget about that. I just want you to be focused on solutions. Be assertive when it comes to solving dilemmas. Stick your head somewhere not in the sand when things go wrong. Many of us are great at distracting ourselves from unpleasant situations. It's rarely good situations. When something is causing you stress, take the time to examine the issue and come up with the best possible solution. And it put it into action. It's much better than hoping for the best. Choose something to look forward to. It's challenging to enjoy life if you lack that something that excites you. When you look into the future or even right now, you could choose highly anticipated vacation or birth of a child or the first book being published or your first song being heard on the radio. All you need are things to look forward to. Create a compelling future. Create your own future. I want you to take these 10 habits and, and, and make them serve you well. With a little effort, you might even come up with some additional habits that will be even more effective for your personal situation. Which one of them will help you the most? Rewind this, write them down. That's what I do. I have a yellow pad, black magic marker, and I write these topics down. And then I sit down here and I talk to you about it. This is unedited. I push record. And then I push stop. Nothing in between. You're getting what's on my mind. There's a guy named Richard Carlson. When I was going through some audio stuff, he was being interviewed on one of the other podcast shows. And he says, stress is nothing more than a socially acceptable form of mental illness, which I thought was kind of right on the, right on the head. I don't know why it gets a pass. I want to create new habits. So for me, 
deciding to adopt new habits sounds like really great on paper, but it can be challenging to put them into action. How many times have you tried to exercise on a regular basis? I've done it a thousand times, only to find myself back on the couch after a couple of days with excuses on why I can't. So lately, I've made myself form a habit. There are a lot of strategies that can make installing and maintaining habits easier. I had to choose a time and a place. So my positive habits will be centered on a time, place, or both. For example, I exercise before work. And then I meditate in the evening. Having specific time or place to perform and perfect your habits is instrumental in ensuring that, you know, these habits quickly become regular part of your life. I always start with one habit at a time. It's a natural for me to resist change. Trying to change too much at once is going to be a freaking recipe for disaster. Promise you that. Take that one to the bank. Begin with a single habit. When you're performing that habit reliably, add the other. Continue this until you've incorporated all the, the habits that you believe will relieve your stress and promote harmony in your life. See, willpower is only available in finite quantities. Adding multiple habits at the same time requires far more willpower than most people have in reserve. See, that's a limiting belief. Attitude, action, approach, willpower is not a commodity. But they are finite quantities in people's mind because they're hard. And when things are hard, they're wearing overalls. That means they look like work and people don't want to do that. There's no hurry. Take whatever time is necessary to install each of these habits completely. It might take a month or even two months. Who knows? Start with the easiest habit first. How can you give yourself the best odds of success? Start with a habit you believe will be the easiest to perform religiously, like clockwork. A little success will encourage you to continue adding more positive habits and make your progress much smoother. And then understand why. Consider each habit and what it will add to your life. If you're able to see a benefit in any particular habit, then you're not going to stick with it. I promise. Reminding yourself of the importance of the habit will dramatically increase the odds of being successful. And then people forget about this one. Reward yourself. As you reach various milestones, give yourself a little reward. Even a single week of 100% compliance is a reason to celebrate. Keep the rewards small so that you have more of them. You've been listening to the Productive Not Busy Podcast with Coach Wayne. Join us next time for more money-making strategies to help you have less stress and more free time. Follow us on Facebook at Productive Not Busy, on Instagram at Frontline.Coach.Wayne, and on Twitter at Wayne New Jr. And remember, be productive, not busy.